Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Leak Code Live, where we do daily Leak Code live streams. We try to hit our marks, continue doing questions, get better at solving data structures and algorithms questions, and overall just have a good time with Leak Code. If this is your first time here, this is your first time watching a Leak Code stream. If you're watching on Twitch, I highly recommend that you go over to my YouTube channel because on my YouTube channel, I have all these different recordings of past streams. I also have playlists dedicated to the different explore cards in Leak Code. I also have weekly roundups, and I even have some sections on some front end stuff where I go over doing things with vanilla JavaScript. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, make sure to head over to my YouTube channel, subscribe, ring that notification bell, follow me on Twitch to get all the latest updates and always be notified when I go live. Also, I added a ton of questions that were on my backlog to raphaelslist.com. So now we're, oh, we're, no, we're, we're almost approaching 150 questions. So we're sitting at 142 right now. So just a plethora of questions for you to go up or for you to go and do. These are all questions that I've deemed to be top quality, easy questions. A lot of these questions, you know, they slip under the rug. People don't think that easy questions carry a lot of weight, but in fact they do. And you know, throughout, throughout this time, I've had so much experience doing easy questions since that's all we've done as of right now. So that's why I've been able to create this list. So remember that each one of these different list items has a stream clip to like the chapter in the YouTube video where you can watch it, which I think it's, it's very, it's very good. I like that a lot. Hopefully that offers you a little bit of a different perspective. And yeah, with, with all that being said, we're currently sitting at 259 questions. So let's go ahead and resume from where we left off yesterday. And let's see, these last two days have been really strong for us. So I'm hoping that we can sort of maintain our streak and let's just go for it. So we are sitting on page four and let's see. So let's start today, <clears throat> excuse me, with count hills and valleys in an array. All right, so you are given a zero indexed integer array nums and index i is part of a hill in nums if the closest non-equal neighbors of i are smaller than nums i. Similarly, an index i is part of a valley in nums if the closest non-equal neighbors of i are larger than nums. Adjacent indices i and j are part of the same hill or valley if nums of i equals nums of j. Note that for an index to be part of a hill or valley, it must have a non-equal neighbor on both the left and right of the index. Return the number of hills and valleys in nums. So let's see. Closest non-equal neighbors of i are smaller than nums i. So without even really, without really even going through the question, or not like, not through the question, but okay, we see the answer here is three. So if we want to find I don't think they mean like I'm guessing that the extremities of these arrays can't be counted. So let's see two, four, one. This is bigger than two and one. So that would be like one here. This is less than four, but the same to the right one, same to the left one, but less than six. This is greater than one and greater than five. So that's my two. I would say that this and this are both hills. Now a valley. If I wanted to get a valley, does it matter if same hill or valley if nums of i equals nums j? It must have a non-equal neighbor on both the left and right of the index. A non-equal neighbor on both the left and right. So non-equal and it's a hill. This is non-equal and it's another hill. Now, how did they get three? I'm very curious to know how they got three because here, like here or here, we can't do anything, right? Four, again, it's non-equal, so that's good. One, like the one is equal on the right. This one, the one is equal on the left. This one, same for both. So let's see how they got three. But I think, okay, so at index zero, there's no non-equal neighbor of two on the left. Okay, the closest non-equal neighbors of one are two and one, since four is greater than two and four is greater than one. Oh, I see, so it needs to be the closest non-equal neighbors doesn't necessarily mean that like, okay, I see. So four, let me see, can this be part, like this is greater than two, but then the closest non-equal neighbor. Okay, no, that's fine. Here, okay, I see. I think this is also a valley because these are both ones. So the closest non-equal is four, and this makes this a valley with the one and the six. So I believe that's how they got three there. So let me think about how we can do this. I almost want to like, 
Hmm. Maybe if we if we draw it, I think that if I if I draw this example out, it might actually be a little bit better for us. So open up our trusty Excalibur. Hey Raphael, I hope you and your family are doing well. Thank you so much, Rashawn. Same goes to you. And thank you for always being a part of the streams. I really, really do appreciate that. That's awesome, man. All right, so if we have two, four, one, one, six, and five. I'm gonna draw myself a little graph here. And then let's just make, I guess, some notches. So we have six and let's say our max is six here. So it's six on both ends, so that's zero. This will be our, let's say this will be one. That will be two. That would be our three. That would be four, that would be five, and that could be six. And then let's just see, can we rotate this easily? Yeah, let's do this. Let's do one. Dude, I love that you have the streams going every day. Thank you. Yeah, of course. I mean, that's it's not it's not always easy, you know, but it's it's definitely something that I look forward to. Some days are better than others. And it's just a it's a good way to keep myself accountable and just to like try something new. So it's it's been very rewarding. Yeah, thanks. All right, so let's see. Let's get our dot out here. Let's give this a color. So the first one's going to be at Position one is gonna be two, or position one is gonna be two right there. Okay, so let me actually change this. I wanna make it a different color. One is gonna be two, um, two is gonna be four, so that's gonna be up here. Let me increase the length there. And then we're gonna to go to one, so that's gonna be over here. Then we're gonna have another one, then we have a six up here, and like a five down here. So, I completely understand this. It's not easy. However, we keep trying our best. Of course, that's a great that's a great mentality. Very good mentality to have. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying I'm just trying to draw like a line, so we can kind of see how this evolves, and then go from there. So right, like both this one and this one are valleys, right? Like this is a peak right here. This is a peak right here, or maybe not a peak, but this is a hill. This is a hill. This, let me see the closest one here. So this would be a valley, and then also this one would be a valley. So now I'm now I'm actually curious why the answer is three and not four. Oh, so adjacent indices. Oh, I see, I see. There, this is this is all one valley. So I wonder if we can almost do like a two pass number of hills and valleys we're like yeah maybe we can do like a two pass thing where i first count all the hills and then i also count all the valleys that's like one thing that maybe we can do or let's see because it'd be nice like obviously in this case like two four one it's very easy to tell that this is a hill because they're just both immediately different. Here, it's harder because the right is the same. So that's not one. This is also not one, but maybe there's another way that we can get information about what the next, the next greater number is. It would actually be nice if like we had maybe two, two indices, not two indices, but like two arrays where we know the next larger or next least number. I guess at any index, we always want to find like, okay, is there something to my left that's smaller? Is there something to my right that's smaller? Okay, yes. Is there something to my left that's bigger? Something to my right that's bigger? Yep. Something to my left that's bigger? Something's to my right, but then that will also count four. So we also have to take into account that this is all part of the same. Let's think about this. What could be a nice way to represent that? I have two hills and I have one valley. It could be the case that I have something that's part of the same hill or valley. Now, okay, six, six, five, five, four. Six, six, five, five, four. There is a non equal neighbor of six on the left and then four. So would this not be. Oh no, because this to be a valley needs to have something greater. 
this is greater and this is less. Okay, so that doesn't satisfy the condition. I wonder if like, hmm. I have a two and a four and then I go down. I guess if I ever see a case of like, I go down immediately, maybe what we can do is like we start at two. I, actually, I, I won't even start at the extremity. So I'll start at one. And I'll say if, if the left is less than my current one, this could potentially be a hill. Then I say, is my right less than the current one? Okay, that is one hill. So then I go here. My left is greater, cool. My right is the same. So then we just continue. My right is bigger like this should be smaller than left or than like the previous and the next. Maybe I'm maybe I would like to do something like that where I have two pointers previous and left or previous and next. And previous and next, I'm just trying to find like a number that fits in between those. And I guess at some point if I do, then that could potentially be my answer. So what I mean is like let's say in the beginning we have let's say previous equals 2 and we're not at a next yet. And we'll say current equals four. So if I'm at four, I can say, what's the next thing? Okay, the next thing is one. So immediately we know we have a hill, right? So say hill equals one. So then we can set previous to be the current one, and then current becomes a one. So now we're at one, and we say, okay, is this one less than previous? Yes, if my right is greater than current, then we can add it, but here this time it's not. So this time we don't change previous, we just go to the next one. I'll say is previous less and then right is greater? Yes, it is. So this can be a valley. So that could be two. Then we get to this one. And I guess any time that we find a hill, a hill or a valley, then we can change previous to be one. And the current now is six. So here I can say six is greater than the previous and is it greater than the next? Yes, it is. So I think something like this could work. And there might be even be a way to do it like without a two pass because I guess we'll have two conditions, right? If the previous is greater than my current one, then that means I can be a valley. If the previous is less than my current one, that means I can be a hill. So what I'm thinking about doing is Let's do this. Let's say let previous is equal to nums at zero. And let's say here, let's say let hills and valleys equals to zero. I actually want to move this here. SL Budhia. Budhia. Hello. Welcome to the stream. Always nice to have some new faces around. How's your day been? How's everything going? Tell us about your lead code progress. We'd love to talk about lead code. All right, so I'm gonna do here, let's do like, I'm gonna say for let i equals to one, i less than nums.length, i plus plus. We're gonna do the same thing that we decided we wanna do, right? Like if, so remember, like right now, let's get our current one. Let current equals nums of i. Right, so if we start again, previous is going to be 2, and the current will be 4. So let's say here, checking for a hill. So if, let's see, if current is greater than previous, and current, and we can also say let next equals nums of i plus 1, and if we do this, we should only go to nums.length minus one. If current is greater than previous and current is also less than next, we have a hill. Else if, let's see, current is greater than previous and, actually no, that's, that's for the hill, right? Now we need to do current less than previous and current is less than next. Let's say this is for a valley. And what I'll do here to make this maybe a little bit easier, 
I'll say check for hill. Here we'll have check for valley. Else here, this is part of same hill slash valley. This is just what I'm thinking so far. And we'll, we'll find out more as we go along. So if we go over this, right? Again, we're at here. We're at current is four and previous is two. Immediately here, I know that my current is greater than two and it's also greater than one. So I can just say hills and valleys plus or equals one. All right. And if that happens, what we do is we say the previous. Oh, it doesn't like something because the indents are all off. Oh, hills and valleys plus or equals one. And we'll also set current or we'll set previous equals to current. Similarly here, if current is or rather, let's say like here, if current is less than imagine this other one wasn't here. If current is less than previous and current is less than next, we also know we have another hill and valley. And in that case, we'll also set previous equal to current. But now what I'm thinking about doing. Right, and, and we can start over and, and really like go through our algorithm now. So previous is two, current is four. So if current is greater than previous, four is greater than two, and current is less than next. Sorry, this should be current is greater than next. We're at a hill. So we're going to have now one hill. In, let's say hills and valleys. We'll increment this to one. And we also say now that previous is equal to current. So now the previous is equal to four. Now we go to the next part of our loop. Right? Let current equals numbers of i. So current is now one. And next is also one. So is current one greater than previous no it's not else if current is less than previous which it is in current less than next which it's not i think really what we can do here is we don't change previous right we shouldn't do anything with previous and actually let me see previous we have the current being one here i don't think we do anything and we just go to the next one that way we can always keep track of our previous previous does that make sense so now we're sitting at this one and I want to make it very clear that it's this one. Oh, that's way too big. Is there a way to do this like? There you go. Let's give this like a different color. So I'm looking at this one. That's not what I wanted. We're looking at this one right here, right? We're looking at this one right here. So now we say current is nums of one and next is six. So is one greater than previous? No, it's not. But one is less than four and one is less than six. So we can add hills and valleys plus or equals to one. And we can say that now pre previous is equal to one. Then in the next loop, we'll get to this point, which is our six. So now the current is six. And the next is what, five? We'll say is six greater than one? Yes, it is. Is six greater than five? Yes, it is. So we add hills and valleys plus or equals one. And then finally, I goes to the last element, which we're not checking for because we, we cannot check extremities. We always need at least one number to our left and one to our right. So I think this could be I think this could be an answer. And. Yeah, I mean, we always we're only ever going to change previous equals to current if either one of these cases are true. There's probably like a nicer way of writing this. Only if both of these cases are true, let current let next. We have previous hills and valleys. So let me expand this. Let's bring this up and let's see what happens if here we just return hills and valleys. And you know what we should do? Should we can go maybe over? I really want to go over this one because this will really solidify it for me. And this time, let's not even we're not even going to use the graph this time. This time, let's just use the actual input array. Let's do the same thing we did. Let me just expand this. All right. All right. So if we start from the beginning, hills and valleys, that will be zero. The previous will be what? Six. And the current will be six. So we ask ourselves, is six like, oh, here we go. Let me expand this code. So we say, is current six greater than previous? It is, or rather, it's not. Six is not greater than the previous. Is six less than previous? No, it's not. So we don't do anything, right? And now we actually just go to the next thing, which means that now we're here. 
So our current now equals 5. 5, is it less than 6? Yes. Is it less than next? No. So now we just go to the next one. So current is still 5. 5 is less than 6, but it's not less than next. So we don't do anything. We just go to 4. And I don't, and I don't think we have even changed. The thing is, this is a... Um, this is interesting because we haven't changed previous in this case, which I feel like maybe can get us to some weird bug, but it seems like it's still working. Four is not greater than six. It is less than six, but only if it's less than six and less than next, which is not, do we do anything. So really we still end up with zero, which is still the right answer. So let's go ahead and run this code for our test cases. We have a three and a three. We have a three and a zero, and let's see what we get when we submit. Are we gonna get it? 54.55, very nice. Yeah, I think this question, see this is, I mean, this is a question, I'm gonna be completely honest, like when I first started looking at this question, I was like a little bit intimidated. I don't know, it just didn't really sit well with me. You sort of get an immediate gut feeling as soon as you start a question, like am I gonna be able to nail this or is it gonna take a little bit more time and a little more thought? This was a question that I started reading it and I was like, I'm, you know, it's going to have to take a little more thought. This reminded me of this very popular question. I think it's called like best time to buy and sell stock because you're always sort of like, I'm always keeping track of my previous. You, and you, you can almost think about this, like not like a sliding window problem, but like an expanding window problem where like I have an anchor point, which is my previous and I can keep moving, right? Like we're at this one, then we're at this one, this one, this one. I can keep moving right, but my previous anchor point always stays the same. Like in this question, my previous always pointed to index zero, which is six. I never changed it. I just sort of kept expanding this window to the right to be able to come up with my answer. So I think it's almost similar to that. I'd say this is sort of like a popular pattern. I'm gonna go ahead and like this question and I'll also add it to my list because I think it is a, a pretty valuable question. Let's see what the discussion sections have to say. Count hills and valleys in an array. Pushing unique elements. You see like this, I mean, it's a simple solution, but they're they're having to like create, let me see, vector, V pushback. They're doing like two things here. Checking for valley or hill. This seems a little more complicated and they're using extra space. Two pointers. Duplicates can be tricky to handle. For that, we use a second pointer, which we update only when we detect a hill or valley. If nums of j is less than i, right, or. Yeah, we actually could have even made that better with an or, right? j equals i. Whoa. You see, and it feels good. It feels really good that people are responding like this, like, whoa, and God, because it means that, like, this is something that we're discovering together, right? I'm, I'm talking about this out loud figuring out how to do this. And it's, it's just working out really nicely for us. So I hope you all learned something from this. I think it's pretty cool. I definitely like, like here, absolute room for improvement by saying, or we can just move this to another line here. We'll put this there. We'll do this, we'll leave that, and now we can just remove all this, so we just end up with this. And if you really, really want, I like to keep current and next because it adds that that much more of readability. If you really want, you can just remove that altogether and just refer to nums directly to make it even more concise, but I, I'm not like too concerned about that. This is a linear time algorithm with constant space complexity, so I'm very happy about this. I'm, I'm really happy we got to go to this question. All right, let's go ahead to the next one. Finding three digit even numbers. So you're given an integer. This might be one of the first ones maybe we do or don't do because it looks like the quality is, it's it's leaning more favorably, but it, it, there's a chance it could not be good, right? All right, so you're given an integer array digits where each element is a digit. The array may contain duplicates. You need to find all the unique integers that follow the given requirements. The integer consists of the concatenation of three elements from digits in any arbitrary order. The integer does not have leading zeros and the integer is even. For example, if the given digits were one, two, three, integers one, three, two, and three, one, two follow the requirements. Okay, so what is it that they want? <laughs> 
all the possible integers that are, follow the requirements are in the output array. So do they do they want oh two 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 eight two eight two two eight eight two two eight two eight I see. You're given an integer array of digits where each element is a digit. The array may contain duplicates. You need to find all the unique integers that follow the given requirements. The integer consists of the concatenation of three elements from digits in any arbitrary order. Okay, so we always need to output three numbers. It does not have leading zeros, and the integer is even. So, I mean, when I see this question, I think a, I mean, a brute force solution, and could we even do it that way? 102, 130, 2233. There's a little bit of a, I almost think there's a little bit of a hint in that the, the most significant bit in each one of these is always sorted. Like you have all the ones first, you have all the twos first, all the threes. Right, that almost makes me feel like this would be nice if we oops, uh, sorted it. Well, okay, they're also saying return a sorted array of the unique integers, but that might be almost foreshadowing, meaning that like we might be able to pre-process this and sort it first, and then honestly, what we can do is just have a. We could do. A, a brute force way would be a, a triple nested for loop. We pick each digit from each one of those. And let's see, it just wants us to three elements, no leading zeros, and the integer is even. I mean, let's just try that for fun and let's see how far we can get, right? So let's say const even numbers is going to be an array. We're also going to say sorted digits equals digits dot sort a b a minus b. And let me remove const even numbers from here. Let's go for it, says Rashawn. Let's go. That's the type of motivation I like. <laughs> All right, so let's say for let i equals zero, i less than digits dot length, i plus plus. I mean, we're just going to do a classic triple nested for loop. j equals i plus one, j less than digits dot a plus plus for let k equals k less than digits dot length, k plus plus. Okay, so the first thing is it can't have any leading zero. So I think the first thing we should say if if sorted digits, and just to make this consistent, I want to say sorted digits for all of these. If sorted digits of k is not equal to zero, although wait. Lead, am I thinking about this? Oh, leading zeros means the first one. Okay, no, this should be I. Okay, so that's fine. Now what we need to do is come up with the sum of all these, which really what we can do is, let's see. Yeah, we can just do, that's zero, one, two, right? Yeah, I think we can say like const sum is equal to, this is what we're going to do. We're going to say math.pow. Yeah, we're going to say, the stream is just loading for me, by the way. Oh, no, that's not good. Let's check our analytics. No data. Experience buffering. I hope it's not just like one of these days where the stream ends early. I'll try to maybe remove some stuff on my end. I don't really have anything going on right now that could be causing like a hiccup. Let me keep checking this. I really hope it's not loading. Yeah, it says it's not receiving enough data. Well, I mean, you guys can see it on the stream as well. Appreciate you letting me know. I might just keep going for a little bit and see how it gets. Or give me one second. Let me see if I can mess around with some stuff on my network. Just one moment.
All right, I think we're back. The the streaming analytics says, or yeah, they, they say we have a great connection, excellent connection. So thank you all so much for being patient and let's just keep going. It always scares me a little bit because, you know, like I don't want the stream to end and then we have to get to like two parts and all these things. And it's, it's sometimes hard for me to communicate that because I, there's no immediate way for me to give you all feedback. Maybe I should start like a Twitter channel or I can just wait to get community. That way I can just post and let you all know what's up. All right, so the first thing is leading zero. So we make sure that the first position is not a zero. And now to come up with the sum, what is it that we want to do? We want to do like uh, sorted nums of i, let's see, times math.pow of 10 to the 2 plus sorted nums of j times math.pow of 10 to the 1 plus sorted nums of k times math.pow 10 to the 0, right? I think that's what they want us to do. And the integer is even. So here now we can say if sum modulo 2 is 0, then even numbers dot push sum. Else we just go to the next one and we return even numbers. Now let me keep checking the stream just to make sure everything's good. I think we're good now. Okay, sweet. So let me run this, see what we get. I'm just going to go ahead and do all the example test cases. So what did it not like here? Sorted nums of i. Interesting. I really, We really need to try and figure this out ourselves here. Oh, sorted digits, not sorted nums. Don't know where that came from. Well, nums, digits, common thing to mess around with or mess up on. Okay, so the first one is definitely not right. <laughs> Let's see. So everything's pretty much wrong. And I'm very curious why. Let me think about this. What did we do? We sorted all the digits. A minus B. So let's say we have like 2, 1, 3, 0. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3. 0, 1, 2, 3. And I'm guessing at some point, oh, but wait a second. We have 1, 0, and 2. Integer does not have leading zeros. So how did we get to 1, 0, and 2? So is it bad that like, does the, maybe, maybe it really just wants us to sort the output and leave the input alone. So instead of sorted digits, anywhere that we have sorted digits, what if we just kept that as digits? Because maybe it wants us to leave that alone. And maybe only the output matters. Okay, so here we got something a little bit better. But we got a ton of numbers here. 102, 120, 130. That's, that's going to make things difficult. All the unique integers that follow the given requirements. 210, 130, 102, 120, 130, 132, 132. Yeah, that's complicated. It's a weird question. I mean, we, we got we made some progress with this triple nested for loop, but Return a sorted array of the unique integers. This is maybe fine. I mean, we can probably just add these to a set and then sort that. But here it's like we want finding three digit even numbers. What's good, bro? Can't stay too long. Just wanted to say what's up. What's up, Marvin? Always good to see familiar faces. I mean, you and Rashawn. Marvin and Rashawn have been here since day zero. I mean, they've been con constant. Like, it's amazing. It's amazing. Hmm. It's like we want to. The thing is, with them being out of order, it makes it tricky. However, wait a second. Digits dot length is a hundred. What if we? Hmm. If I just had a frequency of all the digits. And it's like, well, I can always take a one. 
No, that might not help. Hmm. The array may contain duplicates. You need to find all the unique integers that follow the given requirements. Integer consists of the concatenation of three elements from digits in any arbitrary order. Two, one, three. That's the thing. Once we get to here, unless, unless we always start I mean, maybe if we always start at zero, that seems like it can get crazy though. And they only want MDG Dev is now following. Thank you, that's awesome. Thank you so much for following, really do appreciate it. By the way, I should let you know if you're following on Twitch, I highly recommend that you visit my YouTube channel because my YouTube channel, you should subscribe to me on YouTube because on YouTube is where I have all of my other content. So on Twitch, you're only seeing the leak code live streams that I do and also the weekly roundups that we do at the end of every week. But on my YouTube channel, I also have content for leak code explore cards. And I also have with vanilla, which is my series of doing front end projects with vanilla JavaScript. And on top of that little teaser might be coming soon or not might be coming soon, will be coming soon. We are or rather I am going to be starting a podcast where I talk about leak code and talk about people that do leak code and how leak code has impacted their lives. I plan on actually dropping the first episode at the end of the week, but I'm excited to reveal that to you all. You all will know more when that comes out. Just stay tuned for that if that's something that you're interested in. Thank you so much. Nice voice for podcasting. You know, there's a, there's a part of me that has always wanted to start a podcast because people have told me that my whole life that I have a nice voice and I might as well take advantage of it and do something with it. You know, I enjoy being a software engineer, but this is a very amazing creative outlet for me and who knows what it can become in the future. So let's just keep going and uh, let's go from there. Yeah. I'm thinking about using a set. So let's do even numbers over here. Yo, Sergio Madrigal is coding along. We got two followers back to back. That's amazing. I'm gonna have to say the same thing to Sergio too. By the way, Sergio, appreciate the follow. I would I would encourage you to follow me or rather subscribe to me on YouTube because that's where I have all my other content related to the stuff that you're seeing here. There should be links on my Twitch that redirect you back to my YouTube channel, but love to see it. Thank you all so much for the support. It makes me a lot more excited to see more people interacting with me and the, just like having fun with Lee Code. Feel free to drop something on the on the chat would love to hear about your progress, how you're doing. And let's just go from there. So let's do this. Let's make even numbers a set. And then over here, we can say even numbers dot add. Now, if they want me to sort this, I think what I can do, and this is going to look crazy, but we're going to say even numbers dot values, I think it is. And I think this we can sort. see what this gives us. All right, way more than what we asked for. However, is the right one 888? And why did and that one was not included? Oh, because see, we're also including. It's almost like maybe we do this, but then we also say if digits is not equal to zero and I is not equal to like, I can't have like I, J and K cannot be equal to each other. Like I is not equal to J and I is not equal to K. I mean, is there like an easy way to do that? A is not equal to B, B is not equal to C. Do I have to do like all the permutations of that? I don't want any of I, J or K to be the same. Because I can equal J. Well, I guess, oh man, this is like one of those, like, if I equals, if A equals B, then B equals C. That means that A equals, maybe is that, can we do that? 
and i not equal to j and j not equal to k are we are we going crazy here if this doesn't work i'll probably just skip this one because it, you know it, it like uh i feel like with every other iteration we're slightly getting better but eight and eight we got three eights because yeah and they might not even be i was really hoping that like j equals i plus one and k equals i plus one that would have been nice to do and maybe it, it is something like this wait a second wait a second no no that's not gonna work well is it i can take every number that i can make with one but the one, three, two is the part that gets annoying because you can do one, two, three, but then how do we get to one, three, two? That's the annoying part. Yeah, I think, yeah, because th th this one's just like, my rule is normally like tw around 20 minutes. It's, it's probably been around like 17 minutes. I know we had the hiccup in the middle, but this is proving to maybe be not a very high quality question. The like to dislike ratio sort of says as much. So I think we can skip this one and leave it for a weekly roundup. By the way, thank you all so much for everyone that subscribed. I, I really, truly do appreciate it. We have come a very long way. You can ask like Rashawn or Marvin. Like we, I, I started this channel back in July. Well, I started the channel in like 2019, but I haven't done anything with the videos. Or wait, no, I started, the, when did I start this channel? Yeah, I joined a very long time ago because it's just, I branded the channel as this, but my email address has been in use since 2019. And I just didn't do anything until recently, until July 16th is when I started this whole venture. And it's been a lot of fun. So I really do appreciate everyone watching. I, and I truly hope that you find this. I think the most important thing is you find this relaxing. This is not so much like, this is like, let's say you already did your grind for the day and now you just wanna watch like a show about lead code. That's what I hope this can become for you. And I also hope that you are learning a lot because we've certainly learned a lot during this whole journey. So with all that talking out of the way, because I, I do like to talk. <laughs> Let's see, dun, dun, dun. Okay, implement stack using queues. All right, let's see this one. So implement a last in first out stack using only two queues. The implement, implemented stack should support all the functions of a normal stack. Implement the my stack class. You must only use standard operations of a queue, which means that only push to back, peek or pop from front size and is empty operations are valid. Okay, I have a feeling this is gonna be very similar to the one that we did with implement a queue using two stacks. So let us think about this. Yep, I come here after I knock out the grind. That's awesome, so it's, it's cool that people are actually doing that. That's very cool. All right, so let's think about this. We have our queue. And we know that we're going to have numbers flowing in. Like, let's say they're just flowing from left to right like this. So we can just literally say like, okay, we have a five, we have a four. I know these numbers are all over the place, but you know, five, four, three, two, one. And of course we always have one number that Excala draw doesn't like. We have numbers flowing in from left to right. And as we pop them off, it's first come, first serve, right? First in, first out. So five goes, five, four goes, three goes, two goes. Whereas with a stack, it'd be first in, last out, right? The first one is the one, but then as we start pushing things out, the five is the thing that comes out first. So last in, first out, first in, last out. <clears throat> However you wanna say it, we need to now accommodate a stack using two cues. And I almost feel like it's probably gonna be the same as we had before, right? So implement a stack when i when i pop when i when i push into my queue let's see what should happen i think probably i should also draw like two stacks so if i go down here and i add my 5 right let's say similar algorithm to what we had before i pick the non empty one and i push a 5 <coughs> Now the next time that I, let's see, the next time that we push, we just push, or do we just like pop off? It's saying, 
implement stack using queues. Okay. So we can just peak pop, we pop from front, and then we add it to the next one. Like let's say we're adding a four here, right? Then we add the four after we move everything from one to the left. And now from here, we should just be able to pop. And this is implement stack using queues. Because the, the, the last thing that I inserted, which was the four, should be the first thing that we pop off, which in this case is going to be the five. So is this not the queue may not be supported natively as long as you use only queues standard operations? Can you implement the stack using only one queue? That's awesome. That's, that's a hell of a follow-up question. And we probably can. But maybe we should figure out the brute force method first. Only use standard operations of a queue, which means that only push to back, peak and pop from front, size, and is empty operations are valid. Stack using queues. Okay, I think I think I I think I'm confused because I drew the picture wrong, right? I should have a single stack. Oh, I didn't want to do that. I should have a single stack, and then down here. I can represent both of my queues. So this is my single stack. So let's say I push in my five, which is going to be here, and that would kind of be like this. Now, if I push a four, right, I want it to be like this, but if I were to do this with a queue, I don't want the four, like I want the four to be the first thing that comes out, but if I use the queue, it would be the five that came out first, since that was the first thing. So it seems to me like we'll do something similar where we push onto the queue, and I should probably delete all these numbers. Nope, did not want to do that. Okay, so we push a five. And that means that's the first thing. So let's do this. My stack, we can have this Q1 is an empty array. And we'll say this Q2 is an empty array. And then what happens when we push into my stack? So we already saw that we can just select the empty one. So let's say const empty Q is this Q1 dot length. If that's equal to zero, then we'll set it equal to this Q1. Else we'll set it equal to this Q2. So we can push into the empty one. Now let me think, is that what we want to do? Or do we want to, yeah, we should get const empty queue and const, I guess, full queue. This dot q one dot length is greater than zero. It'll be this dot q one or this dot q two. And make sure my logic is right here. So the empty one, if this dot q dot one dot length is zero, it's q one. The full q, if q dot one dot length is greater than zero, then it's q one. Okay, sweet. So before we push, I think like we saw before, very similar to the stat question, we should move everything from one q to the other one. So I think here we can say while full q dot length is greater than zero. Here, we should do empty queue dot push full queue dot pop. So like in the first one, it doesn't really matter, right? Let's say we want to add, want to create a stack using two queues. So the empty one, let's say is this one, I move the empty to another empty, it doesn't really matter. And then in this one, I push my five, right? Full queue dot length, empty queue dot push. And then finally, we say full q dot push x. So let's like come to the next point now. If I am now pushing to my stack, right, I want four 
to be the thing that sits on top. I want four to be the first thing that I would get out. If this was a normal queue, I would put four back here, but that wouldn't work, right? Because it would mean that we would queue five out when we really want to queue the four out. So now we'll go through our algorithm. We'll say the empty one is this one. This is the full one. So while full queue dot length is greater than zero, we'll do empty queue dot push full queue dot pop. So we'll pop this one off, which moves it here. Or let's see. We need to use two queues though, right? No, no, that's fine. Yeah, because we'll do push and actually push really works this way. I'm kind of drawing it backwards. But when we push it, it'll be like this. And then whenever we pop, we again just look at the non-empty one. So let's say the const full queue. Here we can return, let's say full queue at full queue dot length. Or no, we actually want to do my stack dot pop. So we should do return full full queue dot pop, right? Here it's going to be the same thing. I believe we're on the right track here. I guess we'll find out, right? Full Q dot length minus one for top. And then empty. I guess it only only if both are empty, right? So return this dot Q one dot length is equal to zero. And this dot Q two dot length is equal to zero. So I mean, let's just like go ahead and run this. And let's see what happens. Sometimes you just got to go for it. And that's definitely my mentality here. So immediately wrong. That's fine. <laughs> Output is null, 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 one, one, false, and no, 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 two, two, and false. Okay. So we expect it to push, push, top, pop, empty. So my stack, we push a one, then we push a two, top, Pop and empty. Oh, I see. So we push one, push two. So how do we end up with two twos? Oh, because we push the two. We get the top that's two. We get the pop that's two. I see, I see. So there is there is something obviously that we didn't do right here. Let's go ahead and look at the console here. Let me minimize this and let's draw this again here. Because maybe I'm still trying to think about this like the stack solution, but it, it's not, right? So when we just remove this here, when I push my stack, push, push, we're going to push one and we're going to push two. So the first time I push one and then I want to push, well, let me do it like this. I want to push one. And then the next time I push two, let's think about this. Would it, it would still be the same, right? Because even if I move this here and push two here, that's still the same as me just pushing two to, to this one. But that's not how, how the queue should work for us. So let me think about this. I guess really what I would like is if I push one, and maybe what we should do is we should push two Yeah, it would still, do I even really need to? And wait, they want this to be a stack, which means that when I push two, I should be able to pop that off immediately. So if I'm moving this over here and moving this over here, all right, let's go to the algorithm again using the numbers that we have. My stack, we're gonna push one, okay, because that's to the empty queue, that doesn't do anything, full queue, dot push if this q dot one length is greater than zero so it's going to be q2 so we pushed actually to q2 then we push a2 we say that if empty q so this is empty q this is full q we're going to push one over here and then we'll push two okay which means that now when i get let me see and then top full q this dot q dot one dot length is greater than zero return full q dot pop 
but it said, okay, this said top full Q is this Q dot one dot length is greater than zero. Alexei Fomichev is coding along. Hey, Alexei, thanks so much for joining us on YouTube. Really appreciate having you here. Why don't you drop, drop something on the chat? Let us know how your day is going. How's your lead code grind going? This will probably be the ending of the stream. I normally like to keep these about an hour in length so people can come and watch them and they can be consistent with getting used to watching about an hour of content every single day. So here, full Q, full Q dot length minus one. I feel like this already should return two. There's obviously something I did here. Maybe a probably a very dumb mistake. We have two arrays, Q1 two, and Q2, empty Q. If this dot Q1 dot length is zero, let's say this is Q1, an empty Q, let's say this one is gonna be empty. Full Q, if this dot Q1 dot length is greater than zero, which it's not, we'll set it equal to Q2. So this is full for all intents and purposes as we start this question. While full Q dot length is greater than zero, we're going to pop off full Q and move it into empty. So we should now push one here, or actually no, we're not doing anything there. And then to full Q, we're going to push, maybe this should be, probably this should be empty Q, empty Q dot push. So we'll push one. Okay. And now the second time we come around to two, we say empty is now going to be this one. This one's gonna be full. So from full, we pop it and push everything to here. And then we push from here. I feel like that's kind of backwards. Like, I don't think we need to do this whole thing. Well, let me see if that one little change made a difference. Maybe that's the point of the question. Like, well, I mean, let's let's run it and see. I, I have a gut feeling that it's gonna be incorrect, but let's go for it. Okay, yeah, three one two and three two one. But this is nice because this will give us more of a, this will give us more to work with, right? So let's again start this. This is gonna be empty. This is gonna be full. So we're gonna push a one. We move everything from full to empty. There's nothing, and then we push an empty. Then we push a three, right? So now this will be full. This will be empty. We move everything from one to empty and then we push a two. Okay. Now we get to three and maybe this is where it becomes interesting, right? This is now empty. This is full. Now with a Q, this is the last person, right? So I should move everything from two, one, uh, and then three shouldn't be there. One still needs to retain, yeah, it should probably be, it should probably, huh. I think I know where we made the mistake here. Because one is still the first thing. So when I pop off, it still needs to be the first thing that's there. So this should be a three. We should maybe push it in empty first and then pop off this and then pop off this. So maybe it should be push to empty first, right? Push to empty. And then while fuel Q dot length is greater than zero, we can also push to empty. That way we have, we have the one and the two, we push the three, and then we pop the two, push to here, pop the two, push to there, right? Right after, and that's right after we do a what? Push, 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 then when we do a pop, we get, wait a second, I'm still thinking of this as a Q. This needs to be a stack. This needs to be a stack. So one shouldn't be the first thing in there. Let's see, one, two, and three. We're about to add the three. So we did one and two, and then we add the three. So it should be three, two, one. So three should be at the end, but one should still, so do we need to do like an unshift? Maybe instead of popping, we need to unshift. 
or is that a, I think that's a shift actually we're gonna do something a little different here we're gonna say shift we're gonna say shift there and then finally we add mtq.pushx could be this right yeah well that that's what I'm trying Marlon yeah thanks for the clarification um this is just me speculating that maybe maybe that's what we need because and let me let me show that piece again right because like if I pushed all these normally, I would have three, two, one, right? I push one, I push two, I push three. So if I have in this queue, one, two, three, what I was doing before is I was popping off full. Mar yeah, no wonder, Marlin. Yeah, I feel like you've told me your name before. That's awesome, dude. Yo, man, welcome, man. Yeah, guys, MVRS is from the Discord I have. He's been with us for a long time. That's super cool to have you around, man. That's awesome. Yeah, if we if we do the pop here, then we'd have like two and then one and then three. And if you look at my output, you can see that for that test case I had, the three, one, and two, that those were the two things that were like off. So I was thinking instead of doing that, we would instead do an unshift and have unshift here and then unshift there. And then we push this one. So now when I pop, I get three, two, one, which is the expected here. So let's try that out and see what we get. And let's also add this to our test cases. That's really cool, man. MVRS. Three, two, one, two, two, false, true. All right, so that looks better. Let's go ahead, submit it. 28.40 very cool very cool i think what i want to do since we're already over time i definitely want to get to this follow-up question at some point i really want to get to the follow-up down here so i've been keeping track of this through like oh by the way if any of you guys watch football like it's funny that now the miami dolphins which are historically a terrible team have a record of one and zero but the patriots who are historically an amazing team have a record of zero one so i'm just um I'm a Miami Dolphins fan, so yeah. You can hate me if you want, but I'm, I'm always going to be a fan of theirs. <laughs> All right, cool. So follow-ups over here. I'm going to add it to this notepad I have right here. Go Eagles. I'm, I'm like game for everyone. You know, I just want to have a good time. Okay, so we'll add that there. Uh, Ike LMO. All right, man. Hey, good luck in class, man. I haven't been to class. I graduated in, what, 2017, so I haven't been to class in five years. It's crazy. All right, man. Good luck. Have a good time. Yo, Ike, Ike, Imo, please. How do I start? When you say start, do you mean, I, I would love to help you out. What do you mean when you say, how do I start? Do you mean, how do you start with lead code? I know, Marlon. Don't make me feel older than I already am, man. No, I'm kidding. I'm 29 years old. I feel good, though. I feel the best. I feel better than I've ever felt in my whole life, honestly. So for everyone out there that's like really young and I'm, I mean, hey, being 21 is also awesome and being in college was amazing, but I feel better financially, spiritually, physically, like I'm stronger than I've ever been. I'm, I, I feel like I'm smarter than I've ever been. So it's a good time getting older, man. Just gotta, gotta know, gotta make the right moves. All right, I'm gonna see if Ike responds to see if I can help him with this question before we wrap it up here. So let me go ahead and save this. These follow-ups I'll probably have like towards the end. So for people that are joining now, like our goal is to get all easy questions done first. And then once we do all 592, we'll move to mediums. And then once we do all 1,285, we'll move to the hards. That's gonna take a long time. We're in this for a long haul, but the good thing is lead code keeps on giving. So I'll have content to go forever. My goal is like towards the end, there's going to be probably by the time we get to 500, there's going to be some amount of questions that were probably too tricky to solve, were highly, you know, disliked or whatever other reasons. Probably at that time, I'm going to start having like even longer streams, like three hour streams where we just really deep, like deep dive into the questions and just try to finish all of them so we can round out. All right, I, I, I'm only gonna, I'm gonna, no, did we just die?
what happened did we just like did we just lose excellent connection something happened here i think it tried i think it refreshed that's fine so i think what you should do the best thing is i have streams now i'm just trying to find okay i have all the different streams that we've done since i started on july 16th you can start in LeetCode Live Easy Collection from video zero, and you can literally watch every single video that I've ever published on this playlist. I mean, by now, there's probably like a good amount of videos. You can watch all these different videos. There's 67 videos. And like this first one right here, every single video has video chapters and also links to the questions that we solve. So you can just start by watching every single video some of the streams in the beginning, I didn't have a mic, so the quality is not good. You know, we have like light mode going on here. So a lot of things have changed, but I think that's like a great way for you to start. Anyway, we're over the hour. Really appreciate everything that you all have done for me today. I, I had a lot of fun doing today's stream. I'm very, you know, thank you for the subscribers and the follow followers. It really helps me to keep moving forward. And I truly hope that this is something that's beneficial for everyone watching. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, just feel free to drop your, you know, your thoughts on the comments and I'll do my best to try and answer. I feel like I've been doing a pretty decent job of getting to everyone. So while the channel is still small, if you want to say something, go ahead and we'll have a we'll have a good conversation. So with that being said, everyone have a great rest of your Wednesday. I'll see you all again tomorrow here at 5 p.m. Eastern for another